Thank you so much to all of you uh, for being here, for honoring our invitation to come and hear from the Devolution Forum. As Regina has stated, the Devolution Forum is a platform um, that's convened by civil society that's open to non-state actors, uh, which means anybody really who's interested in the support of devolution. We are particularly committed to supporting the implementation of devolution because we believe that devolution is the transformatory aspect of our constitution. That devolution will transform and improve the lives of Kenyans and that if devolution is allowed to die or if devolution is implemented inadequately or badly, then uh, Kenyans will suffer and the transformation that we voted for, that we yearn for, will not be realized. Uh, in that spirit, uh, we have convened today and we want to share our perspective on the issues affecting devolution. We have prepared a comprehensive statement but we considered it a bit detailed, and so what I'll do is speak to a number of the issues that we have ad addressed in the statement, and uh, I believe uh, my colleagues will also uh, pick up some of the issues that I may leave out. Uh, we acknowledge that great strides have been made in the implementation of devolution, but we are very concerned at emerging threats, and we recognize that where power has been centralized, there is always a tendency by central government to want to hold on to that central power. There is also an, an interest by the beneficiaries of that power to undermine the devolution process, which is a democratic process. And these threats are numerous, and we have identified 10 in our memorandum, but I'll only speak to a few. Um, first of all, we note that there are numerous unresolved issues, issues pertaining to the policy, the management of critical sectors such as agriculture, health, um, the issues that pertain to natural resources, water management. Critical policy has not been aligned to the new dispensation. Because of this, we are witnessing ongoing unhealthy and divisive competition between the county governments and the national governments. And this is creating a perception that devolution is an unhealthy uh, ongoing political debate. The truth of the matter and what we need to see is we need to see national institutions, the county government commit themselves to complete the policy process complete what we call the costing process so that the functions that are due to county governments can be transferred in a sound uh, policy framework. So we are calling for an urgent resolution of these processes to reduce the heated and tense political contestations. We are very concerned that institutions that have been assigned power under the constitution are then being undermined through statutory and other means. One of the examples, one of the sectors we are looking at keenly is the land sector. Land is required to be transformed and there are critical aspects that needed to have been dealt with in order for land issues to be redressed. One of the key issues pertaining to land, for instance, is the information management system, the registration of titles, all of which will be really important in terms of the revenue base of county governments. It appears that the land reforms have stalled. It appears that the ra land reforms are caught up by wrangles between the national and the county governments. Land needs to be resolved and there is a template because there is a policy and more importantly there is a constitution which deals with land in a holistic manner. Mm. And as the devolution forum we are calling on our national stakeholders, our policy makers to remember they are using taxpayers money. They need to use it to implement the constitution not for political contests that only benefit a few. We are concerned with the way oversight is being exercised in a very contentious manner, in a manner that seeks to subjugate one party or the other. 
We call for oversight institutions to exercise their mandate impartially as directed by the Constitution and also to respect uh, judicial uh, judgments and directives when they are given. We are concerned that our legislators are using their powers to confer benefits upon themselves mm. and to pass legislation that is counter to the Constitution. For instance, the amendment to the County Government Act um, that establishes uh, county, land board, uh, county development boards, mm. which are then chaired by the Senate or the Senator of a county, this is a blatantly unconstitutional provision. And there are other attempts to reconsolidate uh, power and uh, policy and finances around um, the Senate and the MP at the constituency level through the legislative process. We cannot afford to have our legislator undermining devolution when our MP, our Senator, our MCA are supposed to empower Con, um, the Constitution. We will be watching this very keenly and we wish to tell all those holding legislative positions, remember that you work for Kenyans, not for yourself, and to desist from these political contests that are under undermining devolution which belongs to the people of Kenya. And becoming conduct of our legislators once again in terms of using their powers to threaten the county executive so that they can get benefits, personal benefits, or get funds passed that are contrary to the Constitution. The powers accorded to the legislatures, the county assembly, the Senate, and the National Assembly, especially the power of the purse, their budgetary powers should not be used for them to coerce the executive for their own personal benefit through increased allowances increased uh, or allocations of funds. We call for these funds to be scrapped. We note there is a court rule, a judgment awaited on the CDF fund, which contravenes the Constitution, and we hope for a very positive judgment in this, in this regard. We call for the legislators to desist from setting up other funds because they want to be responsible for a kitty to undertake functions which belong to the county government. This is a breach of the mandate they have been given. It's a, really a breach and a betrayal of the trust in, uh, given to them by the people of Kenya. We also note, and we've seen media reports, we've seen reports in the Auditor General report that local authority assets were embezzled during the transition process. We know several counties have done an audit of these assets that were embezzled and misappropriated, but we have not seen prosecutions. We are wondering who are these people who are able to continue stealing and looting assets, get published, but they don't wind up being prosecuted. Why are we allowing the culture of impunity to continue under the county government, even under this transition process. We call for a prosecution of these individuals through a concerted effort of the county government that must name these individuals, the EACC and the DPP's office. Otherwise, they will again have betrayed the trust and the mandate entrusted to them and the significant resources they are given to execute this mandate. The last issue I'll speak to is um, the issue of the conduct of the national parliament. We are very concerned that the national parliament has passed or is considering the passage of numerous legislation that will be inimical to the well-being of devolution. We are seeing a tendency towards re-centralization of power. One of the arguments being used is that there's a need to rationalize the cost of governance reduce the number of structures, reduce the number of counties, remove affirmative action seats. This is an argument that's being perpetrated by those who are not in support of a new constitutional dispensation. And we must, and we call upon the media in this regard, to debunk the myth that our, constitutional, our constitution is expensive. Our constitution only becomes expensive when the institutions implementing are not accountable in how they are using their resources. Um, 
and this is part of what we are calling for in terms of the completion of the costing of functions. One of the other main concerns under this legislative review that we'll be watching very keenly is the proposal to audit the implementation of the Constitution. We are aware that the Budget and Appropriations Committee of the National Assembly is an, uh, undertaking this uh, exercise. We hope that it will not be used to make an argument that devolution is too expensive. Devolution is delivering services to corners of this country that have never seen roads, have never seen water, had doctors who are being paid salaries who are not working in those counties. Devolution is dealing with this. What it needs now is a hand for the implementation process to be completed because we are still in the transition phase. We do not need measures to be taken to kill devolution or undermine devolution and we are afraid that this is what we are seeing and we are concerned that the media is not assisting in clarifying the true position and is buying into what we call the spin or the myths being created around devolution. Um.